Get to know James Harris and David Perms, two incredible real estate brokers, founders of Bond Street Partners, and stars of Bravo TV's hit show, Million Dollar Listings, Los Angeles. Welcome both, both of you to the show. <laughs> Thanks for having us, Chandria. How Thank you, you so much. <laughs> How are you handling quarantine? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've had a fantastic time. I think we've all become closer to our families and set up a, a home office and spending more time with the family. And now we're out and about showing properties. It's actually been a very interesting but amazing time. Sounds like very productive as well, right? <laughs> we've been busy. We've been very busy. So no, no complaints on, on our end. Thank God. Right. All right, well, let's dive in. I want to thank you both for being my special guest on the show today. Um, what can we expect to learn about you both um, in this current season of Bravo TV's Million Dollar Listing Los Angeles? We don't mess around and we get the deal done. That's what you can learn. No, it, it's, a, it's a super interesting season. Obviously, there's drama. Um, but I think what's interesting this season is that it really showcases how closing a deal isn't as easy as people think. We lose deals, we get them back, we lose them again. Not every property sells. And I think this season really showcases that our jobs really are not easy, our clients are difficult, and we have to work really, really hard to get the deals closed. And I think that for me is probably the most exciting thing about the season is seeing the challenge. I love that, I love it a lot. What do you think, <laughs> David? Uh, no, I think, I think much the same. I mean, look, I always find with this show is every season gets better. And I think part of that is the evolution of who we are and who we become and how we learn to deal with situations. And also just the reality. I mean, even this season, we've, we've been faced with a number of difficult sellers. We've been uh, faced with a bit of drama, like difficult situations. Uh, the wildfires, COVID-19. So I think all of this just comes into play and it's reality. And I think that's what keeps it super exciting and really a never ending storyline, you know? I'm curious, does being on the show, I mean, obviously you all are reality stars as well as business um, businessmen. Um, does it, does it, hinder, does it, obviously it, it helps your business, but does it make it more challenging because you're filming and then you have to close the deal as well? Is it more challenging? Well, actually it's interesting you say that because it, it is, you would think like, you know, with, with cameras pretty much following us around 11 months of the year for the most part, right? What I've noticed is because we're actually filming what we're doing, they almost come hand in hand. So sometimes, I mean, obviously we can only film so many deals because there's only so many episodes in the season. So there's a lot more going on around it. But I feel that when the camera is there, it's just filming what we're doing at that time. So, so it, it's kind of cool for us to watch it back as well. Because it's like, oh yeah, that's how it went down. You know, you just forget certain details that you're reminded of. So, so I say they come hand in hand. Awesome. <laughs> um, what's the story of how you two met and ultimately became business partners? I think it was out of our mother's wombs. I mean, our mothers were best friends growing up. Uh, David likes to always remind me that he's the older one, which at some point in I'll life, I'll stop doing that. Saying, I'll stop doing that um, soon, won't I? It works against but, you as you get older. We have known each other since day one. I mean, there was a, a stint of my life and my mother's life where we moved in with David and his family for a year. Um, but our, our friendship relationship goes back to day one in London, growing up, working together at the age of probably 15 in London or 16 for me. And then obviously reuniting here in Los Angeles and then setting up our real estate business eight years ago. So from day one. Well, I mean, I mean, one thing James missed out is we got into a lot of trouble. When I say a lot of trouble, it wasn't just work. It was, we had a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, you know, you live and you learn and you grow up. Except I was the only one who got caught. David never got caught. I stuck up to you all the time though. I always said <laughs> His mum said to me, his mum said to me, why is James so badly behaved? I said, he's not any worse behaved than any of us. He just gets caught for everything. Because really? <laughs> 
we've grown up a you little bit. You were so bit, honest um, and transparent with her. That's so hilarious. <laughs> the truth. It's the truth, right? Um, your incredible track record in real estate resonates with high net worth, domestic and international clientele. How would you explain your no-nonsense approach to closing million dollar real estate deals? You took that right off our bio, didn't you? I did. <laughs> <laughs> That was it's good. A very, it's a good. It's a good question. Whoever wrote it, it well. <laughs> we, we we've stayed transparent to each other, to our clients. We work hard for our clients, and I think Dave and I both understand that you have to go the extra mile for your clients, and that's whether or not you're representing a buyer or seller. And so we've always been incredibly creative on different ways that we've grown our business, found our listings, found houses for buyers, and we really don't give up until we get the deal done, and we're both incredibly competitive. Um, and that's a great thing. We're competitive with each other, which keeps both of us on our toes, and we truly don't give up until the deal gets done. And I think you need that drive and enthusiasm to be successful in this business because there's a lot of competition, it's a cutthroat industry, and you have to be willing to go get it in order to get to the top. And I really feel like Dave and I both have that passion and drive. So do you want, like, you know, how much time do you spend, like, personally outside of the show, outside of business? Do you guys hang out or, you know, your, do your families get together for holidays and things like that? Not enough, I'll tell you that <laughs> yeah. much. Definitely not enough. I wish Definitely we did more. Enough, actually, you're right. We're both very busy and we've both got our own lives and we're together a lot at work and we definitely don't spend enough time together. Or I think if we spend too much time together, we may murder each other. So yeah, I'm kind of thinking that, I'm kind of thinking that too. Um, but no, absolutely, you know, as you get older and you just get more responsibility and it's like, it's never, it's never ending. I mean, look, I have my family, I've got my brother and sister here. We've got, you know, James and I have friends, we have our spouses, friends, we have our kids. And now this whole school thing's coming into play. Like James always used to talk about, like I'm going out with, with the kids from school's parents and I've got this barbecue with that. This is a whole new thing for me because my daughter is now like just over two years old and we've been introduced to all of these parents. So actually really awesome. So I guess it's just like, things are just like crazy right now. It's just not one moment of like nothing which I don't mind. I like to be like, go, go, go the whole time personally. And I know James does too. And that's why you're successful. <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> now, James, you were born and raised in London, England. I read that your entrepreneurial journey started at the age of 16. What and who were your early inspirations in business and real estate? I mean, for me, it was always that I left school so early and all my friends finished school, went off to university, and I never got to do that because I really didn't like school. And so all of my friends were three, four, five years older than me when I was at such a young age. And so I think it was all my friends and my family friends, and I saw how successful they were in the real estate business. And my mum was an interior designer, so I always moved homes and saw that that market was rising. And so I always had a passion for real estate, um, but it was really friends and family and growing up in Northwest London that kind of got me my drive to just want to get out there, start working, start selling. And I, and I really have a passion for selling. It, it gets me excited. I'm a people person. I love to negotiate the deal. Um, and so the second I was able to get out of school, I just wanted to start working and, and start growing and, and becoming a better person. And that's what I did. I started selling real estate at age 16 and I really haven't looked back since then. It's been a wild, wild journey. That's incredible. 16, you've already, you know, had a plan for your life. You already had your sights set on um, a brighter future. And I commend you on being so young and knowing what Thank you want. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And David, originally from London as well, you studied economics and politics and you worked at a hedge fund. What inspired your own interest in the real estate industry? Well, for me, it was more like, yeah, I went to university, I left university. I couldn't, I wanted to go into finance, like banking. I couldn't really get a job there because my grades weren't good. It's very competitive. Like it's all like academic, academia driven. So if you haven't got like the top of the top grades at university, it's like forget about it. So I went to work for a hedge fund for free, actually. I just offered myself free to work there. 
um, as an intern, which I did for like two months. And at the end of the two months, they offered me a job, um, which was good. So I was there for a year and I really, really learned about finance and the art of the deal, like just from a completely different perspective. Um, shortly after that, I went to work for a private investor to buy uh, commercial real estate across Europe. Uh, then the credit crisis hit and everything went completely wrong. Like, it was probably looking back on it the best experience I'll ever have in my life because at that age I can afford to like, you know, lose everything and start over again, you know? But it was really, really an interesting experience that you get to see such big failures and experience such big failures so early on in your career. Um, for me, that definitely gave me a backbone and I think an instinct of, of how to do business, um, you know, is, is I guess as is, is well as we can. Um, shortly after I moved to LA and uh, started, we got our real estate licenses and we started selling real estate. So everything has always been intertwined, um, but I love the deal, I love the negotiation, I love the fact that, you know, there's so many different facets to what we do. You know, you've got the real estate, which is incredible, you've got the negotiation, which is the intricacies, that's where you really have your chance to shine, right, and really impress the client, because if you do a good job for the client, they're going to remember that, right, they're going to remember that next time they want to buy or sell a property, they're going to remember that when they're speaking to their friend about a recommendation of who they should use to buy or sell their property. So I always find the people I work with are very, very loyal to me and I'm very, very loyal to them. And that's how personally my pipeline has developed over, over the long term. Wow, you're, you're just as resilient as well, especially I love that you turn your failures or what you thought were failures um, into a new life for yourself. So I just love how, how resilient you both are, you both are and how, ambitious, how ambitious you both are. So that's well, you know what they say, they say, they say, I guess it's so cliche, but it's a good one. Success is failure turned inside out, right? That's all it is basically, you know? Nothing Amen. ever happens straight away. The harder the grind, the more rewarding it is. And I think that kind of excitement about the possibility of failing and making the mistakes and getting through it. That's what really makes it so fulfilling what we do, in my opinion anyway. And early on I see that not, neither of you were afraid of the hard work, you know. Um, to be 15, a lot of 15 and 6 year olds aren't thinking about their future, let alone, you know, working hard. That you, you know, you volunteer to work and that turned into a job, you know, so I just... Well, like, <laughs> there was a lot of part, there was a lot of partying in between, but you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, Probably a lot. <laughs> both set your sights on Los Angeles to succeed in business. Why LA versus New York or any other major city? Have you been to LA? <laughs> it's the best city in the world. She lives in LA. I mean, it's, it's really the best city in the world. I mean, coming coming from London, I think New York is such a buzzing city, but it's very similar to London. LA, you get the weather, you get the landscape, the lifestyle, you've got beach 30 minutes away. Um, and this is just a great city. And I couldn't be happier that we're here. Even in the 15 years that I've lived here, I've seen this city change so much. In the last five years, it's changed so much. And then even just watching, you know, COVID happen, watching the East Coasters move to the West. I mean, people want to be in LA. The lifestyle that it affords is, in my opinion, there's no better place to live in, in the world than, than LA. So for us, or at least me, it was a no brainer <laughs> to come here over New York or even Miami for that matter. But uh, I, I couldn't be happier and I know David loves it here too. David, do you love it? Well, the, the weather plays a very big part, I'm not going to lie, it's like, you know, I always say like for every rainy day in London, there's a sunny day in LA, so that basically means it's sunny all the time in LA, which is pretty oh, much yes. it. So, the truth is, look, I, I met my wife here, um, you know, my daughter was born here, um, we have, you know, incredible life, we have a beautiful home, um, and, and I just think for me, what LA represents is something very, very special, because for, for me personally, when I was in London, I never really got much success, I tried, and I failed, which is fine, but I think for me, when I moved to LA, that was my turning point, that signified uh, actually, you know, getting a little bit of success, which which was really, really rewarding after so long. So I just love everything about it. Yeah, the weather, the lifestyle, the business, the opportunity, the people, it's just awesome. I mean, it, it's, it's really cool. LA is awesome. I've only been here six years. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the 11th. 
Well, I want to thank you both for taking the time to be on the show under your show today. Please tell us how we can catch you all on the show <laughs> on Bravo TV. Every, every single Tuesday at 9 p.m. Pacific Central, sorry, Standard. Yeah. Exactly. Check in, Bravo. Let's go. Great season ahead. Great season. And Chandra, thank, thank you so much for having us. It was My a real pleasure. Thank, thank you so much. And you all take care. And I wish you continued success wow. and everything. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> take care. Bye bye.